Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you the most OP Light Shadow Heart Cleric build guide in Baldur's Gate 3. The awesome thing about this build is you're going to get all the gear early on in the game, allowing you to use this for the full game. What this build excels in is lowering the enemy's attack roll so that your team doesn't get hit. That's one of the biggest benefits of the Light Cleric, and you're going to see this goes really hard. Now for the class, we're going to, if you can change the Cleric cantrip, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, we're going to go with the Cleric here in level 1 and go for Cantrips. Sacred Flame's not bad. Guidance for the plus 1d4 to ability checks is great. And then you can go, if you have Mistress Spells, that's good too, but we'll just go with Resistance here for the third spell. Now, we're going to go with the Light Cleric. Now, the Light Cleric has some really awesome benefits to it. Like, you get the Burning Hands at level 1, and you also get Fairy Fire. And the subclass feature, Warding Flame, shield yourself with Divine Light, use your reaction, impose disadvantage on the attacker, possibly causing their attacks to miss so pretty nice you also get the light cantrip here for our ability scores we're gonna go 16 wisdom here and then we're gonna go with i would say 16 dexterity is likely the best choice for min maxing although you can go with 16 uh constitution as well it's entirely your choice there so taking that to 16 dex 14 constitution and 16 wisdom although you can go and go 16 constitution it's entirely your choice now, if you're using Shadowheart as your main character, take Persuasion, but otherwise we're going to keep the skill proficiencies at what it is. Now, you get, again, a lot of this gear at the start of the game. I'll cover it all after we go through the build. Level 2, we get the Radiant Dawn here, 2d10 Radiant plus 1. Uh, radiant damage dispels magical darkness, and we also get the Turn Undead. Now, we can choose our prepared spells. So, the Cleric gets some good ones with uh, Guiding Bolt. We also got a bonus action, Healing Word, which can pick up downed allies. Bless is always a good choice. Command is extremely useful. And for the final one, Sanctuary can be great to prevent a target from getting hit. Command is going to be one of our most effective spells. Trust me on that. It's extremely useful. And then at level 3, we get Scorch and Ray, which is a really useful spell. If you get Mistress Spells, you get the Pyrotechnics. not a big deal if you don't have that mod. Uh, but the Flaming Sphere and Scorching Ray are two of the best choices here. And then for our next level spell, Hold Person is extremely useful. And then we also want to take Spiritual Weapon. We can go back and take Sanctuary. Just remove which one of these you don't use as often. Spiritual Weapon is a bonus action. The reason we want to take Spiritual Weapon, some people don't like that spell. We can summon in a Maul. And what the Maul can do is that it can actually uh, daze targets. And when the target's dazed, they're, they have disadvantage on Wisdom Saving Throws. So Command and Hold Person. They're less likely to succeed on that. For our Ability Score Improvement, I think it's best to take our Wisdom up to 18 here. So we're going to go with that there. And uh, for our level 5, this is when we get our turn Destroy Undead, but we get the Domain Spells Fireball, which is huge, and then also the Daylight Spell. Fireball being some people's favorite spell. It's extremely useful. 8d6 fire damage. And if you got Mistress Spell Mod, you get the Ashelard and Stride and the Flame Arrows. But again, if you don't have that mod, it's fine. I just want to cover that for those that do. We also get the Ever Powerful Spirit Guardians. This is an incredible, uh, this is an incredible spell because this can deal Necrotic or Radiant damage to the target. It's a 3d8 of either or. We also get the choice of Glyph of Warding, which is super useful because we can set down a Glyph and then the target walks into it, they take damage, which is really great for crowd control. So we'll take the uh, Sanctuary back at this point. Now at level 6, we get ourselves the Improved Warding Flare, so you can use the uh, dis give a disadvantage on attack roll whenever an enemy attacks your ally. So great for being uh, defensive. It helps the team survive, so that's really nice. I also like Animate Dead for a free corpse. Uh, you can basically just get something to tank for your team. You don't have to take that though we can go with earlier spells like blindness or silence are two useful ones prayer healing is good outside of combat the mass healing word for the 1d4 healing is pretty nice if you need to buff your entire team in a jiffy now at level 7 we get ourselves wall of fire 5d8 crowd control it's a great spell for just blocking off entry points if you have mr spells you get web of fire but also the guardian of faith so what's nice with the guardian of faith is you can place this down and it'll basically tank for you and it has 60 health it'll attack and deal 20 damage and every time it attacks it'll uh, lose health but it's great for just tanking enemies we also take banishment or freedom of movement freedom of movement's nice because it lasts until long rest so you can basically uh, can't be slowed down can't be magically paralyzed or restrained banish can t banish a target to concentration not my favorite spell Death Ward is also nice to protect a creature from death. The next time de damage would reduce to zero health points, they remain conscious with one health point. So that can be really useful as well. And also, I didn't take earlier Nec Inflict Wounds, but that's a really nice spell as well, dealing a good amount of necrotic damage and it scales well as you level up. At level 8, we get Potent Spellcasting. So you can add your Wisdom modifier to the damage you deal with cleric cantrips. So pretty useful. 
And then you get another choice of spell here, so... Again, you can go with any spell that you find particularly useful. Um, the cleric spell list does get better as we level up. Now we can take alert here or ability score improvement and take our wisdom up to 20. Uh, that's probably the best choice there. And then for our level 9, we get ourselves Destructive Wrath being a very effective spell. Immolation if you get the 5 or the Mistress Spell mod. And then the Flame Strike with the 5d6 of Fire and Radiant damage. So that's pretty nice. And for our level 5 spells, Insect Plague is actually extremely underrated. What we can do is we can set Insect Plague. It makes difficult terrain. And then we can command Grovel people into it. So they're stuck in it, taking continual damage. Becomes very useful. Now, we also get the uh, Planar Binding, which you can attach your uh, consciousness to another worldly entity, which is pretty nice. But once we get to level 11, we get our best spells. Divine Intervention is really useful. You can only use it once per uh, time, once per character. And if you respec, you don't get it back. But uh, level 11, this is where we get our best spells. Planar Ally. That is super useful. We also get Create Undead and Blade Barrier, which are two other great spells. And then we can also take something like Harm, which is 14d6 and Necrotic Damage, which is nice because it reduces target's health as well. So lots of great spells. And for our final level, we're actually going to take a level of Wizard. You can go with this and take another spell and get the feat and take your Dexterity or use Alert. But the reason we want to go with the Wizard is Magic Missile. We don't have a very high intelligence, obviously, but Magic Missile doesn't miss. And what Magic Missile can do for us is it can set up a ton of damage. We also get some new, nice utility spells like shield, which increases the armor class by five. So another reaction to save ourselves. Thunder wave can be pretty decent as well. And the ever popular magic missile. This can stack up radiating orbs like no other spell can. We also get things like fog cloud, which is great crowd control early on in the game. Um, so you can dip into this at any time. If you have mystery spells, you can take the absorb elements, but I'm not gonna focus on that for this video. Fine familiar is nice too. Necromancy spell, false life will give you additional health, which can be somewhat useful. Long Strider for the increased movement speed is also great. We only get to prepare one spell. We're going to prepare Magic Missile. And uh, Shield would be the other spell you'd want. So that, that alone is worth the Wizard Dip. And you're going to see why. So basically what we want to do with this is we would want to take out a... Uh, take the Staff of Spell Power or Marker Heshker. Make this your weapon. And then what this does is it gives you the Arcane Battery for a free cast. With this, we can free cast ourselves a Planar Ally. I recommend the Diva usually, but uh, for the fight that I'm going to get into, the Genie is the better choice. The Genie can teleport around and use Thunder Wave to knock creatures out of bounds, which is super useful. And then you can go with the Lath Blood of Lathander there. It's going to create light around you for the Coruscation Ring. So when the Weir deals spell damage while illuminated by Light Source, they inflict Radiating Orb on the target for two turns. And targets that illuminated take additional two damage. And the Amulet of Devout gives us a plus two to spell save DC and additional channel divinity charge, which is really nice. Although you can go with the Amulet of Greater Health if you want a bit more survivability because we only have 86 health there uh, versus 134. Put of the Weave plus two to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. I like the Thunder Skin Cloak. Whenever you, a creature with reverberation deals damage to the wearer, it must succeed a constitution saving throw or become dazed. We can also go with another option here for amulets is the Spine Shutter when the wearer deals damage with a ranged spell attack and inflicts two turns of reverberation on the target. That becomes really effective because we can stack reverberation with the Woods of Stormy Clamor whenever the wielder deals a condition upon a target that inflicts two turns of reverberation. Radiating orbs is a, is a condition, so that gets really strong really quickly. Luminous Gloves, when the wearer deals radiant damage, the target receives two turns of radiating orbs. And this here, when the wearer deals radiant damage, they cause a radiant shockwave. So this can be really good. Uh, very effective. I'm going to be... So this is the most optimal outfit. However, the fight that I'm going to go into, they're strong against Radiant Damage, so I'll show you some other options we can go with. Uh, the Robe of the Weave for the plus one to spell save DC and spell attack rolls, and plus two armor class is really nice. Obviously, Helldusk armor, extremely useful at all times. What this does is it gives you a lot of extra defense here, so we get our armor class up to 24. And with this also, um, we can use the Blood of Lathlander here, but if you go Evil Shadow Heart, the Shar Spear of the Evening is really great because you can create darkness and you get blind... Uh, you can see in the dark as well. Uh, Sacred Star will inflict radiating orbs on the targets as well, which further stacks your abilities, which can be really nice. Uh, so that's two other good weapons. Flail of the Ages, you can choose an elemental damage type to add to your weapons, or the Defender Flail for a plus one armor class, putting it up to 25. Or some other great choices. Typically, we want to pick weapons that are going to buff up our character. So Marka Heshker can also be really useful too, because you can get the Kreska's favor. And we can apply fire damage to our attack. So... Those are a few different options uh, that we can go with. 
And likewise, the Luminous Gloves, whenever we deal radiant damage, will get extra damage on the target. But if you are going against a fight where you can't do that, we can also use the Gloves of the Blagger and Skies here with Thunder Damage and Lightning Damage, dealing additional uh, two turns of reverberation, which can be really nice. So you could go that route as well. But yeah, I'll show off what this looks like in combat here because it is extremely powerful. I'm going against one of the worst fights uh, here. This is like Shadowheart's weakness. But another thing you can do is you can use the arc, the uh, circlet of intelligence to boost your intelligence and then give us more wizard spells. So that's another fun choice. Um, the warped headband of intelligence will give us four wizard spells to prepare. So that can be another option there if you'd like to go with that, because uh, with this, we can go with some other options like Thunder Wave and uh, Witch Bolt for spells if you wanted to. But pretty much what we want to be doing is we want to get into um, combat and then use our um, air effect spells. Magic Missile will be good for picking off and dealing extra damage and also stacking or radiating orbs. Our crowd controls are Insect Plague. Glyphal Warding is a nice one to set down too. And then we also have Wall of Fire. So some very effective spells that we got. We can replenish a level one spell as well if we got we go with that route. So also pre-buff yourself with Kreska's Favor. And you can also get Lightning Spells here if you want to use the um, Reverberation uh, weapons. But we'll go with the Flames of Wrath here because this is focused on fire damage as well. Gives us a free Wall of Fire. So we can drop down a glyph here. Um, so I guess we got into combat pretty early. And um, we'll also bring in our genie too. So we got our genie. The genie's nice because he can teleport and he's got thunder wave. It hits hard. But uh, with us, we also got some nice spells like <laughs> we got our free wall of fire here. So you can go whoop and plop this down in an area that's going to hit targets. Because yeah, this, this is huge wall of fire. Um, it apl applies the radiating orbs there. You can see we got two turns of radiating orbs set up. I don't know why the fire disappeared there, but uh, we also got our bonus spiritual weapon, bonus action. So you summon this in, summon it far away in combat. That's the biggest tip I got for you because otherwise it's going to have a struggle running around in combat. So that's good for our first turn. Our wall of fire didn't last because they would run through it and take damage. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, having issues with some mods that have been running and... Um, I guess we're taking fire damage from the um, the uh, the Kreska's favor. You get heat, which deals additional fire, and then we get we got a nice group for fireball here. So this is perfect, and we'll just let them troll on in. What you want to do with this is get your radiating orbs inflicted on as many targets as possible. This is a forty percent chance of hitting lock, of course. If you can daze someone, they're a prime candidate to hit with your um, with your radiating or. Um, your hold person so that's gonna be one of our best crowd control options so if you don't have a if you don't have anything for crowd control at the moment you can go with that so uh, level five spell we can go boom 95 95 90 90 hopefully we can land these all and we did so this is where this becomes really effective because we can just go here and this is our turn we don't really need to do another action here and then our genie will come in and um, clean up. The genie is great for a variety of reasons. So hopefully we can knock them out. Boom. Yep, yeah, we did. <laughs> so there's two of them taken care of. That's why the genie is one of the best. Um, I'm usually a diva fan, but the diva's not even good in this fight. But the genie can take out enemies without having to reduce their health, which makes this even better. So then we got our free bonk here. Going to be critical. 14 damage. Nice. They're trying to break out of hold person. And we're not letting that happen. We also got things like Destructive Wave, which are really fun to use too. So you can hit with that and um, deal a ton of damage. We also got Scorching Ray. What's cool about Scorching Ray is it uses an attack roll. We're not going to be close enough to be able to deal with that, but you're going to see what we can do. So Bonk, Radiating Orb plus 10, Radiating Orb plus 6, and it sunk them through the floor there. So also got two turns of Reverberation. He got Reverberation, so he got bonked into the ground. This becomes pretty crazy. And uh, then we can use our Heat Convergence too. So whenever we deal a fire damage spell, we got a little extra damage on it. And then again, the Genie does what the Genie wants and it goes around to Thunder Wave people into the ocean. So down, down, down by the river. Uh, didn't hit, unfortunately, but that's fine. He's got a minus 10 to his uh, attack rolls from Radiating Orbs, so that's really good. And then we can also, yeah, nice, good amount of damage there. He's dazed, so we could have went with... Um, our crowd control option but 
We also got the ability to just go command if we want to. This is a level one spell that we can upcast for multiple targets, which is really nice. Now, we also got a free fireball, so we can go with this and we can hit both of them. What's nice about this is we're going to deal additional fire damage from the heat convergence. 41, 34, and it dazes the target. So they're dazed for two turns, giving us a much more likely chance of being able to land hold person if we wanted to again. And then we genie will do with the genie wands with the shifting winds bonus action you can teleport into the most advantageous positions and then say see you later and hit them with one of these here thunder waves so snap your fingers send them into the ocean so yeah the genie does carry heavy weight but you don't get that to level 11. so typically what you want to be doing with this build is whenever you're in combat you want to be applying radiating orbs so i didn't get to show it off but the radiance of the dawn here is another really great option so i'll just Get myself into another combat encounter this is 2d 10 plus 12 radiant damage so this hits in a huge area and it's going to apply a bunch of radiating orbs in addition we also got some awesome spells like destructive wave which can knock targets prone and stack reverberation on the target so i guess i'll go back to the luminous outfit here so i used held us for the increased armor class but the luminous outfit is also really good here we're getting a little glitchy um so yeah, the luminous armor is very effective. So when we deal radiant damage, we create a radiating shockwave. And you're gonna see what this can do. Uh, so we'll just get out into combat here. And we can also haste ourselves with the bow. So this is really fun too. So applying haste makes us even stronger. And then we can go ahead here and I guess I'll get into a combat. We'll get into combat first. So magic missile is nice because you can upcast this and hit multiple targets and apply multiple stacks of radiating orb to enemies too so we'll go boom radiating orbs make this area glow so let's get into combat here shadow hearts going against them and uh oh we got unlucky with our <laughs> not the best initiative roll there but that's fine this is why you take alert for a feed but we didn't get to next feed so um yeah this is gonna be a rough fight because i don't have oh lost our haste this is over for us <laughs> uh we'll see how this goes so what you want to do when you're cornered like this is you got your destructive wave and we can go with a radiant version of this and this is going to hit a lot of targets so we can blast them with that and that's radiating orbs everywhere it's 10 stacks 10 stacks 10 stacks <laughs> yeah that's a lot and then we also got ourselves the radiance of the dawn here so you can use that instead too boom more radiating orbs supplied this max stacks is 10 but yeah the Destructive Wave is probably our best spell for dealing damage in a huge area of effects. So be, don't be afraid to use that if you get cornered by a bunch of enemies because you can apply your radiating orbs really quickly. So yeah, also with the heat convergence, you can deal a little addition, additional fire damage on top of your attacks. So it's huge. Fireballs can go crazy. So just want to highlight the most OP late cleric build for Shadowheart and Baldur's Gate 3. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is extremely useful throughout the entire game from Act 1 to 3. So, yeah, hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.